Hello, and welcome to our beginner series on V-Ray for Maya. This series is designed to help you get started with the product and begin rendering in no time. In this video, we'll explore the user interface of the V-Ray render engine and provide a brief overview of the functionality of some of the tools. Please take a moment to download our project files, which are linked in the video description, so you can experiment with the scene in your own time. Now let's get started. After installing V-Ray for Maya, the first thing you need to do is navigate to Maya's plugin manager. Here, you can search for V-Ray and ensure both load and auto load are checked. If you'd like to set V-Ray as your preferred renderer, you can adjust this in Maya's preferences under the rendering section. You'll notice there is a new shelf added called V-Ray. The V-Ray shelf is where you'll find the most commonly used tools. Starting from left to right, we have different color icons divided into groups. The first icon opens the render view, also called V-Ray Frame Buffer, or VFB. This is where you'll see the final rendered result, or the interactive rendering. The VFB offers shortcut icons for its essential tools, such as saving the image, mouse tracking mode, render region debug shading, and of course, buttons to start and stop the rendering process. We can start rendering in interactive mode by clicking the teapot icon with the small play symbol. If you click and hold this icon, a drop-down menu will appear, allowing you to select from which camera to start the rendering process. At the bottom of the frame buffer, you'll find information about the color values and pixel positions your mouse hovers over. On both the left and right sides of the VFB, there are handles that can be double-clicked to expand. For instance, double-clicking the right-hand side handle unveils the Layers panel, where you can apply color corrections to the image. This is also where you can switch to light mix enabling us to make changes to lighting without needing to re-render. You can even perform compositing directly within the VFB. The Collaboration tab offers a tool for sharing your work with other users, allowing you to upload images from the VFB to the Chaos Cloud Collaboration, where peers can provide feedback. Expanding the left side gives access to the History panel, where you can save your rendered images for comparison. Next on the V-Ray shelf, there are a few icons that allow you to send your scene for rendering to other Chaos applications, such as Chaos Vantage, our real-time ray tracer, and Chaos Cloud. Following that, we have a set of yellow icons related to lighting and various light sources. The next group of icons is designed for importing external assets like V-Ray proxies, V-Ray scenes, or volume caches. We'll delve deeper into these tools in an upcoming beginner series video. Next, Represented in orange, we have a group of dynamic geometry tools, such as decals, fur, enmesh, displacement, clipper, and more. This includes a tool for managing object properties. All these tools relate to the scene's geometry, allowing modifications or even the creation of new geometry. After that, we have the shading tools. Using the icon with a single sphere, you can craft a standard V-Ray material. Right-clicking this icon reveals a list of available V-Ray materials. Any icon on the V-Ray shelf with a small white arrow in the lower right corner indicates a tool with multiple options accessible via right-clicking. Additionally, there's an icon that opens the Chaos Cosmos browser. Our ever-expanding library of render-ready assets such as 3D models, materials, textures, HDRIs, and more. You can filter the content by category, and when you find an asset you'd like to use, simply drag and drop it into the scene. The Chaos Cosmos library is frequently updated with new assets. The final icon on the shelf with the V-Ray logo directs you to the V-Ray documentation page, where comprehensive information about every tool and setting related to V-Ray can be found. V-Ray also has its own menu, where you can find all the tools and objects, whereas the V-Ray shelf provides quick access to the most commonly used tools. Our next focus is the V-Ray render settings. First. Ensure V-Ray is selected in the Render Using drop-down menu. All render settings are categorized into relevant groups, represented by tabs such as Common, V-Ray, GI, Settings, and more. In the Common tab, you can adjust rendering resolution and set preferences for animations and file management. In the V-Ray tab, you can select your desired render engine, V-Ray or V-Ray GPU. We can also control the image quality from here. The Image Sampler Rollout is where you can balance rendering time against quality. The GI tab, standing for Global Illumination or Indirect Illumination, offers various methods for computation. You can also manage the generation of caustics from this tab. 
The Settings tab contains some global system settings. The defaults are good for almost all scenes, so you would rarely need to change these. Some useful tools like the V-Ray Memory Tracker and V-Ray Profiler can be enabled from this tab to analyze and improve the rendering performance. The Overrides tab lets you globally override certain scene settings and also enable global volumetric effects and environment textures. The Render Elements tab is where you can create and control render passes that are used for compositing and post-production. Lastly, the IPR tab contains parameters to control the interactive rendering. Another important place where we would interact with V-Ray is the Maya's Hyper Shade. In the Create Node browser, clicking on the V-Ray filter displays only V-Ray related materials and textures. From this list, you can create different types of materials for a range of purposes, such as car paint, wax, skin, hair, snow, and more. You can also generate various volumetric effects like fog and underwater environments. That covers the majority of the user interface related to V-Ray for Maya. Be sure to take a look at the rest of our videos in the Getting Started series. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you soon.